Hey everybody, how's it going? I've got a little bit of a special one today. Um, and not to get too personal, not to go on too long in the intro, but I feel like this video kind of needs it. So, as guitarists, we look up to certain people, right? And we have these certain ideas of what a guitar is when we're first starting out. And as we play, we think about all the guitar gods of our time and the time before. You think of people like Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, uh, Tony Iommi, Jimmy Page, all these different guitarists that really uh, influenced all of us as musicians and uh, as guitarists. There are certain types of guitars too. There's the Stratocaster style of guitar, the Telecaster style of guitar, and we've covered those extensively on this channel. Uh, we did an SG, we did the Les Paul 100. I've never owned a proper Les Paul, and I've always wanted one. But I kind of stayed away from it because, you know, my first guitar was a Squire Strat and I really looked up to Jimi Hendrix and Van Halen and those guys played Strat styles, so that's kind of what I stuck with. And I never really got a Les Paul style. Over the years, you know, getting engaged, getting married, having a baby and all these different things, you know, you kind of fall by the wayside of exploring that side of yourself because, you know, you're so busy with life and with so many other things, you stick to what you know, you know, for me. Sticking with what I know was the Strat style of guitar, and people have made those kind of comments before, like, hey, that's weird, you're playing something that's not a Strat. Um, so, you know, I never really got around to it. Uh, like I said, we did the Les Paul 100. It's a great guitar. Is it a real Les Paul? Yes. Is it a classic Les Paul? Not really. I mean, that one's a bolt-on neck, sounds good, but in your mind and in your heart, you know, it's not a like something Jimmy Page would have picked up, right? Something that Zach Wilde would shred on, um, that kind of thing. So I've always wanted a real Les Paul, but I could never really afford one, you know? They were expensive. Uh, even a Les Paul Custom used is like four or $500, which is cheap. But if you look at the kind of guitars that we do on this channel, they're always in like the $200 or less range, and they're usually broken in some way, and I restore them. So I've never really bought myself a brand new, nice guitar. Come Christmas time this year, just a week or two ago, uh, my wife had been very secretive about what she got me for Christmas and she wouldn't say anything about it and she went out and got it and my dad was holding on to it for her so I wouldn't see it and uh, kept it under wraps. I had no idea what it was. So Christmas morning came. Did I keep it secret? I can't believe it. I have one. I have a real Les Paul. Now it's not a Gibson. It's an inspired by Gibson. But this is a real Les Paul in just about every way. Look at that color. This is a smokehouse burst. Look at that headstock. Open book. Look at that neck. Set. Now I'm not bragging. That's not what this video is about. Uh, this video is about, I, I have something now that I always wanted and I'm really excited for, for myself, obviously, to get to gig this and play this and record with this, but I'm also excited to get to show it to you guys uh, because that's part of what drives me as a musician is you guys. I really enjoy reviewing everything that I get, going under the hood, looking at all the different things, telling you what I think about them because this is, being a guitarist can be lonely sometimes. 
there's a lot of people out there that are snobs about things or that are holier than thou or that don't really want to give you advice. They'll say, I'm using this ultra specialized tool to do this. And then you look it up and it costs $200 for the tool. No, that's not what this is about. This is about a collection of people getting things done the way that we can and looking at really cool guitars. So here's a really cool guitar. Now, a little bit more backstory and then we'll get right down to the nuts and bolts of what you're looking for here in this video. I remember when these guitars came out, and I'm not saying I remember like nostalgia, I remember 30 years ago, and no, I remember like two years ago when these Inspired by Gibson guitars came out. This one caught my eye. This smokehouse burst color, to my knowledge, was only ever a Gibson color. And to see it on an Epiphone made me really excited. I was like, hey, you know, when I can spend that kind of money on a new guitar for myself, that's the one I want. And so I'd go to Guitar Center and play. There was this one specific one that they had in there. Um, and we don't have a Guitar Center here where I live, so it was quite a ways away. And I'd always go and I'd pick it up and I'd play it. And man, I, I loved the way it felt. I loved the way that it played. I loved the color. You know, I thought this kind of looks like an heirloom color, right? This is like, oh, that's what grandpa's guitar looks like, or that's what dad's guitar looks like. And I just, it was a real special color to me, you know? Special guitar, Les Paul, loved that color. And I'd always go play it. I'm not the kind of guy who drops hints and stuff for presents, and I never expected to get anything this nice, this expensive, um, for a Christmas present for my wife. So definitely surprised, definitely shocked, and definitely grateful that I get to have this and get to review it for you. So now that I've lost half of you with my personal story, um, let's get down to business. That's what we're all here for, right? So what is this guitar? What's under the hood? Let's do it right now. Here we go. This is a Epiphone Les Paul Studio, inspired by Gibson model. It is definitely inspired by Gibson. We've got the block inlays here. I showed you the headstock already, but we can take another gander at it. Got your open book headstock up there, and we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Pardon the mess. I still haven't quite cleaned up from when I did the uh, mini strap for my sister which she loved, by the way. Um, she really liked that guitar, and I'm really proud of the work we did on that. So that's why there's like a turtle laying here. But anyway, so what is this thing? Effectively, it's a Gibson Les Paul Studio, not made in America. That's it. Um, I believe it has a laurel fingerboard, which normally I don't like those, but I really like the way this one feels. The fretwork on this is amazing. The finish is glossy it's a little bit glossier than you'd find on a gibson that's another thing i want to make sure you understand this is not a gibson and i'm not here saying it's exactly the same as the gibson it just says epiphone that's simply not the case but where they cut the costs i'm okay with it they didn't make it in america i wish it were american i wish everything were american but we don't all have five thousand dollars to buy stuff from gibson so here we are um You've got these, they call these speed knobs. Now here's what's really cool and the killer feature of this model to me over a standard 50s or a standard 60s. It's got push pull on both pickups. Normally you're only gonna find that on the custom and the custom is very expensive now. Up to $700, $800 and used market has gone crazy. You can hardly find them for less than four or 500 now, used. So getting this one brand new at 499, pretty cool. You've got your black pickup rings. You've got your black pick guard. Um, these pickups are the Alnico Classic Pros and they do have the push pull so you can get some single coil tones out of them. You have your ABR01 bridge and you've got your stop bar tailpiece here. If we roll it over to the side. You've got your standard jack with a metal plate, not a plastic plate. On the back, you've got your uh, your switch knob there and you've got access to your pots here and then I'm gonna move the camera and show you the headstock up top here you've got your open book headstock because it is the inspired by Gibson model um, you do have your studio truss rod cover Les Paul model um, you've got your nut here I'm not sure what this is made of it might be plastic I'm not sure at this price point whether this would be synthetic bone or plastic I'm not sure I can't speak to its tuning stability yet because I've not really played it. I'd like to do that for you honestly as a first impression. If we roll it over to the 
back side here. You do have Wilkinson's. These are not Grover's. These are Wilkinson tuners, okay? So these are basically the Grover Rotomatics, but they're not by Grover, they're by Wilkinson. So I don't know if their deal fell through or what, because a lot of their guitars are coming with these Wilkinsons. Um, you can find these exact tuners on Amazon and they have amazing reviews. Everybody that buys them say that they're basically the same as Grover's, work as good as the Grover's, and that they highly recommend them. Here you've got your handcrafted in China. I'm not sure if that's just fancy wordplay or if that means something. If that means that this isn't just a CNC manufactured guitar, they actually had people make it. Um, sad that we live in a world today where we have to ask those kind of questions, but I don't know. I can tell you from appearance, feel, and sound of the demo I played at the store, these are amazing guitars for, uh, for being made in China. I mean, made in China doesn't really mean crap like it used to with guitars. I unscrewed it, but I haven't taken it off yet. Let's take a look at what's hiding under this cover. All right, so it looks like we've got some big, fat, full-size pots in here. 500K, 500K. I imagine that these are 500K also. These are those push pulls. Um, and it has the solderless wiring. That is my favorite thing ever invented in the history of guitar tech. Okay, maybe not seriously, but, but close. What this means is, if you get new pickups that have this kind of connector, all you gotta do is run one thing, boom, you're done. And if it's four wire, you get push-pull. I don't think I'm gonna need to change these, but if I ever wanted to change them to Gibson pickups and I got some that had the, put the uh, solderless system, all I gotta do is pop them in here, done. So, there you go, that's what you see inside there. Uh, that looks pretty damn nice if you ask me. I mean, we don't have any mini pots here. Uh, we got some pretty good wiring going on here. So, okay, we've talked about it. We've looked inside it. Now it's time for the best part. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, here we go. Got it right here. And uh, we're just gonna run through some sounds and see how it goes. I'm really, really excited to see how this does. So we're gonna start on the clean setting. We're gonna have this on the bridge first, and then we're gonna pop it over to the neck, and then we're gonna try and split. And then we'll do overdrive, and then we'll talk about what we heard. So here we go, we're gonna go with bridge clean. Big sound there. I'm majorly impressed so far. All right, let's check the neck. It sounds as good as I would hope. Try it split. So we're gonna split both of them. We're gonna go bridge first. For comparison, here it is not split. As you can see, not split definitely gives it more volume, but split makes it a little bit quacky, right? So let's try up here now. So this is gonna be not split. Split. amazing all right let's do it in the middle with uh, both of them split now Thank mm -hmm. you. 
absolutely amazing. Like, I don't know. It sounds awesome. All right, let's throw in some overdrive and go down to the bridge because a lot of times with a Les Paul, that's what you want to do. I'm sorry. Absolutely astonishing. That sounds so good. All right, let's put it uh, up here. if we can get that really good single coil neck overdriven tone. I don't know if we will or not. Let's see. <laughs> knock it down to the bridge for the last part of the demo here. Uh, single coil bridge. <laughs> Okay, so what do I think of it? I think it's absolutely amazing, guys. Seriously, I mean, I can't believe how good this is. I mean, I, I'm not like super shocked or anything because I've played playing this guitar for so long at Guitar Center that I knew it was good, but it's mine and like hearing it through my stuff and recording it myself, oh man, this thing is awesome. Keep your eye out for one of these. If you're not sure about the price, that's really up to you. I mean, 500, you could get a lot of different kinds of guitars for 500, but if you want a Les Paul, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. I mean, yeah, it weighs a little less. If you're a gigging musician, you might appreciate that. The color's really cool. It looks just like it does in the pictures, unlike some guitars where you see them and you're like, oh, that doesn't look anything like the picture. This looks just like the picture. Tuners are holding tune pretty well. Um, everything about it is everything I would want. I mean, I can get the super heavy, distorted, heavy uh, humbucker sounds. And I can get the really nice clean sounds with them too. You can also split them and it sounds pretty convincing. It doesn't sound just like a Strat, but very close. This guitar for me is absolutely perfect in every way, except it doesn't have a tremolo. And it's really too bad that they don't make something like that, that I could just put on this guitar and make it perfect for me in every way, right? 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 
Oh boy! We're gonna install this in part two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.